now the diagnosis is not settled for this uh, child. Mm -hmm. We complain from prolonged fever and this wasting. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. We worth it, because she believes the sanctions are working. In November 1997, former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark headed a delegation of the International Action Center on his seventh trip to Iraq to investigate the continued effects of the United Nations sanctions on the population. We were shocked by what we saw, an almost total absence of medicines, medical supplies, and spare parts for the equipment. Despite the heroic efforts of medical personnel, babies, children, and the chronically ill continued to die in vast numbers. The United States government claims that Saddam Hussein is to blame for the crisis. What is the real cause of the suffering? The sanctions. They are an extension of the 1991 United States war against Iraq. The goal was to cripple Iraq's infrastructure and make civilian life unsustainable. We demonstrated the capacity of technology to cripple a country without ever setting foot on it in the Persian Gulf. It's important to recognize that because it goes hand in hand with the sanctions. When we merely say that we flew 110,000 aerial sorties in 42 days, one every 30 seconds on the average, 24 hours a day, we ignore what we really did. Officials said the death toll was now 288, with many more to come. The trucks kept filling up and driving away, past waiting relatives who knew they might never be able to identify the bodies of their loved ones. The community of Amaria filled one of the first of many funerals with gunfire in sign of grief and fury, and with angry words aimed through foreign journalists. My mother, she's gone, shouted this young man. This woman asked, could not all your modern technology tell you that there were children and women here? Bill Blakemore, ABC News, in the Amaria district of Baghdad. We destroyed every silo for grain or anything else storing food in the whole country. We destroyed all the storage and processing of food plants throughout the country. Even dates, the world's biggest exporter of dates famous processing and packaging plants in Baghdad, deliberately destroyed. We didn't want them to be able to feed themselves for a long, long time. We're all aware of the famous little powdered milk plant. The, the United States government says that in this factory here you are making chemical weapons. Is that true? No, that's not true. They are lie. Because this is milk for children. Uh -huh. This powder, milk of children. Uh -huh. Nothing else was made? Only this in the factory? Yes, and you can see on yourself. With the only factory in the Middle East to produce powdered milk, they were producing about 17% of their powdered milk requirements. We destroyed that, cut off all the milk, and malnutrition of the mothers immediately jeopardized all of the infants. 70% of the pregnant women, even today in Iraq, suffer anemia. The death rate for children has soared compared to 1989, the last year before sanctions. One of the biggest causes of death in Iraqi children today is diarrhea and dysentery due to the untreated drinking water. Iraq's water purification plants were heavily bombed in the war, and many that were repaired have broken down. 
the United Nations bans the import of spare parts and chlorine into Iraq to purify water. We saw the effects of this policy in the hospitals. This is the second attack for me of acute bloody diarrhea, amoebic dysentery. Most of them are due to contamination of water. It is malnourished, anemic, underweight with a developmental delay. Diarrhea and vomiting. Do you have tap water there? No. You see the conditions of these children it shouldn't, shouldn't happen anywhere, and it's caused by the sanctions that the United States government insists upon. The U.S. military used 800 tons of depleted uranium weapons in the war, causing a rise in cancers among the population. Why does the United States government spend $50 billion a year to patrol the Persian Gulf and keep Iraq locked down? Please raise their hand. Why does it pressure the Security Council to maintain the total blockade? We need to look back on the recent history of Iraq. For many years, U.S., British, and French oil companies owned 95% of Iraq's oil while they maintained a puppet monarchy in power. The people lived lives of extreme poverty. When the Iraqi people carried out a revolution in 1958 against King Faisal II, U.S. and Britain lost their stranglehold. They sent thousands of troops to the Middle East, but it was too late. Iraq had become a sovereign country. Iraq nationalized its oil and used the wealth to develop industry, modern sanitation, education, an excellent health care system, electricity, and highways. Iraqi women won new rights. The United States wants to return Iraq to its earlier status as a virtual colony in order to secure its control over the Gulf region's oil, which is two-thirds of the world's petroleum reserves. Our involvement in the Gulf is not transitory. It predated Saddam Hussein's aggression and will survive it. Long after all our troops call, come home, there will be a lasting role for the United States in assisting the nations of the Persian Gulf. There are those that would like to lift the sanctions. I am not among them. Our main objective, our main objective is lifting the sanctions, which has been very, very cruel on our people. Why do you think Americans want to keep the sanctions? That's their policy. Why do you think? ask them. That's their policy. It's against the will of the international community. It's against the will of many other countries. I think they are making profits from that. But I don't want to make accusations. Financial profits? Yes. Like how? Who is selling oil instead of Iraq? Iraq had a, uh, a share in the oil market. That share was topped by the sanctions. Who is selling that? Who? They know very well that Saudi Arabia jumped from five million barrels a day to eight million barrels a day. Three yeah, million yeah. barrels, the Iraq's share, have been added to the share of Saudi so, Arabia. And we would take this to a war front to protect Saudi Arabia's making more money? No, you are sharing that money. Everybody knows that. Before the sanctions, Iraq used its $20 billion in annual oil exports to import 70% of the country's food and medicine. The cutting off of Iraq's oil by the Security Council has caused widespread hunger. <laughs>